Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week five, day five of our study of Nehemiah. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Nehemiah 8, 13 through 18. Welcome back to the 10 Week Bible Study. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us? Speak to us, fill our hearts with the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. We're reading today from the NIV. This is Nehemiah 8, starting in verse 13. On the second day of the month, the heads of all the families, along with the priests and Levites, gathered around Ezra the teacher to give attention to the words of the law. They found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded through Moses, that the Israelites were to live in temporary shelters during the festival of the seventh month, and that they should proclaim this word and spread it throughout their towns and in Jerusalem. Go into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild olive trees and from myrtles, palms, and shade trees to make temporary shelters as it is written. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. This was to commemorate that when they came out of the land of Egypt, they had to live in tents and temporary shelters everywhere they went for the next 40 years until the Lord brought them back into the promised land, the land that he'd promised to to Abraham 400 years before. And so this was to commemorate that. And for a full week, once a year, they're supposed to make these these temporary shelters, these sukkots, uh, as they're called in in Hebrew in in Jerusalem. And so they're supposed to make these little dwellings and go and, and stay outside in them. And they're not supposed to have any leaven. They're not supposed to have any yeast or anything in their house during this time period. And the, there were very specific instructions on what type of wood and trees and things like that they were supposed to make these things out of. And so they decide, hey, we need to do this. And what we're going to find out is they they haven't really ever done this. From the time of Joshua until now, they haven't really followed this, this law. And so they're taking it all very seriously. And they read and it's like, well, this is the time we're supposed to do that. We need to do it. And so they call everyone to Jerusalem. So they all come to Jerusalem and they all start to celebrate this. Verse 16. So the people went out and brought back branches and built themselves temporary shelters on their own roofs, in their courtyards, in the courts of the house of God, in the square by the water gate, and the one by the gate of Ephraim. The whole company that had returned from the exile built temporary shelters and lived in them. From the days of Joshua, son of Nun, until that day, the Israelites had not celebrated it like this, and their joy was very great. Now, the like this is not very clear. We have no record anywhere in Scripture itself of them ever celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles from the time of Joshua until now. So they obviously have extra biblical accounts or sources or stories in Nehemiah's day of them celebrating it somehow. So I don't want to say that they never celebrated it, but it would seem like they never really celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Maybe they took a tent that they had and they pitched the tent or they did something. And it's like, you know, occasionally people would celebrate however they wanted to. You get the sense that there was some kind of hodgepodge, um, not something really focused at celebrating this festival the way the Lord had required them to celebrate it. All the way from the time they entered the land of Israel until now. And and you know, that's a testimony of the grace of the Lord. He required them to do this. And they had never really done it. Again, there's a little asterisk next to the really done it because we don't know exactly what ways they did and didn't do it. But we do know that they had never celebrated it in the way that the Lord had asked them to celebrate it up until this point. Verse 18. Day after day, from the first day to the last, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They celebrated the festival for seven days, and on the eighth day, in accordance with the regulation, there was an assembly. They all came together to celebrate and to thank the Lord for what he had done and bringing them out of Egypt and then bringing them into the promised land. This was to celebrate that 40-year period where they wandered through the desert and they never had lack. That's the big thing, right? You leave your house. The point of the, of, of the Feast of Tabernacles is that you leave your house, you build this janky little shed type thing with barely enough to cover your head and all that, where you're going to get rain on you and things like that. You go and you live in that and you do with 
as little as possible. Right? You, they would bring things from inside their house out, but you can't bring a lot, right? You can't bring a whole lot of stuff into this, this little shed thing, this little tent that you've built for yourself temporarily. And that's the point is they take mostly what they have on their back and a few extra things. They cook for themselves outside. They do all these things and all of their furnishings, all their nice things are on the inside. And they remember the days for 40 years when the Israelites were wandering around the desert outside of the land of Israel and the Lord still took care of them. He provided for their every need. And I think this is a powerful reminder to us today, right? We can, we can, we, we live, most people in the West, not all, but most people live, and especially probably everyone listening to this on a smartphone, most of us live in incredible comfort. Incredible by means of the rest of human history would look at us and be like, wow, you all live like kings. The poorest person listening to me right now, most of the rest of human history would look at you and say, you live like a king compared to what we had in my day. And, and I think it's good from time to time to be reminded of what we truly need to survive and that the Lord can provide all of those things so well. I think it's good to remind us what we need to survive versus what we like and what we want and what we tell ourselves we have to have. I think many of the problems in our society, at least in the United States today, could be solved probably if collectively in the United States once a year, if we did this for a week and reminded ourselves we don't need all of those other things. They're nice. I like them. Everyone likes them. That's why we have them. And that's why we continue to develop as a society. But I think it would be more, it would make us more thankful for what we have. I think it would make us more, more in touch with what we actually need so that when we go without something, and right now in the United States in the fall of 2021, I'm, when I'm recording this, there is beginning to be lack we go to the grocery store and there's empty shelves and we we go out to eat and the prices have doubled and there's no one to deliver things. I mean, we're, we're in a real bad situation. It's not desperate right now, but things are not going well in our country in a way that they haven't gone like this since maybe World War II um, or, or maybe the, the oil embargo when there was a lack of, of oil and things like that in the 70s. But, but this is really something that we haven't seen in a very long time at this scale. And people are kind of losing their minds because they can't go and, and get, you know, butter or just whatever they need, you know, toilet paper shortages, all those kind of things. And, 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 and people kind of lose their minds over that and they, they get anxiety. There's, there's, there's tons of emotional issues and I think a lot of that could be solved if we just reminded ourselves of how little we actually need and how great the Lord is, is, is at providing that and then a whole lot more. What we have nowadays is so far beyond what we need. It's so far beyond what the the Lord can you know abundantly provide. It is like we are, are one of the most blessed materially blessed societies in the history of planet earth. And I really do mean that the poorest person in the United States. I don't want to say that categorically because there are some places where there still is almost third world abject poverty in the United States. But for the most part, the poorest of the poor in the United States still live like Kings compared to people a thousand years ago, 2000 years ago, 3000 years ago. It really is remarkable. And it doesn't mean that everything in life is perfect or, or it doesn't mean that, you know, well, if you're poor, get over it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that every American, every person in the West, every person on planet earth could probably learn a little bit from this. For the 10 week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10-week Bible study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.